I think it came from the Black Lives Matter protests and things that were going on here. And I said, weaponize your privilege. So who are they talking to? And she said, well, I think they're talking to white people. And I said, they're saying they have some type of privilege over me to save black bodies? I mean, what are they saying? And it dawned on me. I said, the left has a God complex. Black people think that they're inferior, and white liberals think that they're God. And black people are praying to white liberals to save their lives. Use, weaponize your privilege to save black bodies. It reminds me of an outtake from The Godfather, which um, he left it in the movie, Francis Ford Coppola. But it's an outtake. Vito Corleone is going to see his um, concierge, Jinko. He's dying. And he brings all of his sons. Jinko's not going to make it through the night. And Jinko's afraid. He's scared to death. He's lying there, and he sees Vito come in with his sons. And he says, Godfather, Godfather, uh, save me from death. When death comes in the room, make, make some deals. He's seen Vito do all these great things his whole life, right? And he th thought that Vito was like supernatural. He said, make a deal with death. Pull some springs, strings. Make death go away. And Vito looked at his old friend, seeing how afraid he was. And he looked at him and said, Jinko, I have no such power. Do not fear death. And Jinko said, well, then just stay with me. The left would tell the black community that we have that power. See, Vito told Jinko the truth. I have no such power. But when the black community goes to the left and they ask them, can you feed me? Can you clothe me? Can you educate my children? Can you make me like you? Can you make me equal to you? They say, yes, we can do it if you just give us your soul. And for 50, 60 years, we've fallen for that lie. And we're at the bottom of every socioeconomic statistic in the United States of America. Look at where they rule. Everywhere they rule. Detroit, Chicago, New York, Philadelphia, Memphis, everywhere they rule. Murder, mayhem, death, destruction, worse schools. They control every whole house, every crack house, every failing school. Haven't you done enough to my people? Haven't you killed enough of them? Haven't you put enough of them in prison, destroyed enough of their families? I hold you in utter contempt. And then you have the nerve to say you want to expand it. You have no shame. Ooh, that was Vincent Ellingson. I want to give him a shout out because I tried to do a live stream video of his speech and it crashed midstream. So I wanted to give this opportunity to shout out this video, uh, DEI's Modern Day Slavery of the Mind. Uh, and this, this is the video. I'll probably link it to this one. And I, I, I advise all you guys to watch it because I, I really, yo, that was some powerful messaging. And also, I came in with a very strong title. And I'll kind of show you why DEI is actually white supremacy. Yes, white supremacy. White liberal supremacy. So uh, I, I made this claim a lot that DEI assumes that your outcome is directly tied with your race. And the reason why I say it's white supremacy is that is this idea that people of the the white liberals, because like white the reason I'm focusing on white liberals is because white liberals have a negative uh bias against their own people. And they think that they'll have they have to hate their own people on the behalf of black people to get good, equitable outcomes for black folks. When the reality is black people's outcomes have never been determined on, on whether white people like them or not. All you have to do is look at our history. Look at black American history. And for all the people who will try to shame me and saying, oh, Kenny, you're a second generation American. Your dad and parents came from uh, a different country. You're not foundational black. I say screw all that because in, in the same breath, you want to talk about, oh, we're all one people. We all got to vote collectively. But for some reason, just because of my origin, my, my lineage, I don't have a right to speak on things or not. Last time I checked, I'm born in America. So I am an American and this is my history. Like it or not, that's the truth, right? And it's the funny part about the black community is that the same kind of critique they give white folks, oh, they're xenophobic. They don't like immigrants coming over here. Black people operate the same way. When black immigrants come over here and they become successful, Creon Jean-Pierre is the first black uh, LGBTQ 
a secretary of press secretary, even though she's not good at her job. This is why I said DEI only benefits the educated, well-off blacks, but we'll continue. She's of Haitian descent. Same as me, Haitian descent. Why it wasn't an African-American picked? But black people will defend her with the same vigor as everyone else because she fits the narrative. But the God forbid she ever speaks out against the interests of black Americans, they'll start pulling this, oh, she's not foundationally black. Claudine Gay, another non-African-American, non-foundational. This is dumbass term. They're Americans. There's stats out there that shows that black immigrants make have a higher income. No, they make more money than African-Americans, quote-unquote African-Americans, those who are descended from slaves. Why is that? Is it because of racism? Every time I do my research, I find other factors are the cause for why race, there's racial disparities amongst the African-American community. There's even a disparity against uh, black immigrants and African-Americans. Some of the most successful people happen to be immigrants. It's craziness. Every time I do my research, oh, okay, this black person is in power. Oh, yeah, she's a DEI hire. Oh, she's from a well-off Haitian family. I'm talking about Claudine Gay. Or Corinne Jean-Pierre. Oh, she's Haitian. Oh, ça passe, ma boule. Crazy. But African-Americans, they defend DEI with such vigor when they benefit the least from it. Poor blacks benefit the least from DEI. Only well-off, middle-class blacks benefit from DEI. So DEI is not even doing what it's supposed to do. And finally, you know, it took it took Charlemagne 10 years, but he finally understands DEI is mostly garbage. And that's why I, I, I started off with uh, Vincent Ellingson, because I, I, I want to kind of speak with that energy today. Because DEI is white supremacy. It's based on this false idea that white people somehow have a superpower because they're born white. This is what I'm talking about, that the, the black community didn't survive liberal, liberal policies because the liberal philosophy taught them that they were helpless because of their skin color. The liberal left policy, the liberal left mindset has to condition black folks to be victims, oppressed, and inferior. Isn't that not white supremacy? Isn't that not what black people claim that conservatives are doing? Conservatives say, no, we're going to treat you like everybody else. That's racism. For black folks nowadays, because black people have been conditioned so much with special treatment from the liberal mindset, this is why this is the real this is the reality why black people overwhelmingly vote Democrat. Because Democrats give them special attention. The Democrats give them special treatment. The Democrats give them special consideration, while the conservatives will never give them consideration. The conservatives will treat them like everyone else. Hey, you're all American. You all benefit from our policies. We don't want to make special concessions just for you, just for this group, just for that group. But that's what the black vote demands because the, the Democrats are willing to play that game. And I like the story that Vincent uh, opened up with, with on this video about how the Democrats will lie and say, oh, no, we could fix that. If death disproportionately affects black people, which it does, because black people on average are younger as a group compared to white people because we kill each other at a disproportional rate. Thirty six percent of victims of black black victims of violent crime are black. Thirty six percent. No one talks about that overrepresentation. Because the data will point back to who? Black people being the problem. I say if black people want to change their outcomes, they have to change their actions. They don't want to do that because that takes hard work. That takes being self-critical of yourself, of your group, of your people, of your culture. But black people ain't willing to do that, that work. And like I say, change is, 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 it's been the same for a reason. Change is outside of your, comf uh, outside of your comfort zone. And black people are comfortable blaming things on racism. This is why they don't want to let go of DEI. This is why they don't want to let go of affirmative action. Especially these older blacks that benefited from it. Us younger ones, us young bloods, we don't benefit from DEI anymore. And I'm glad finally someone coming out to say it. I know these liberals are going to be mad. That's why I say, being pro, if you're pro-Democrat, you're not pro-black. There's no way you can be. If you look at the evidence, you look at the facts, more black people graduated college before affirmative action. After affirmative action, less black people graduated college. The absolute number of blacks did not graduate college most because most of them were dropping out because you were mismatching them. Right? You were mismatching them. For, for more than 40 years, the debate over affirmative action in admissions has focused on whether it amounts to unfair and unconstitutional 
constitutional discrimination against whites and now Asians. The implicit premise for most people on both sides has been that racial preferences bring only benefits and no cause, which is a fallacy in of itself. Every solution, every decision, every action has a trade-off. This is craziness. It's a myth. And black people have been conditioned to believe that there's no downsides to the affirmative action. Oh, you wouldn't be here. Like, imagine the white supremacy in that move, in that, in that argument that a lot of black folks in my conversation will try to tell me about affirmative action, about DEI, that you wouldn't have opportunities if it wasn't for this. Itch, you didn't see the history? Martin Luther King was a third generation college graduate. What you talking about? This is what I'm talking about in the black community, in the black culture. Ignorance trying to science knowledge. Boy, I almost said the N-word. That's crazy. These people, like, I, I don't understand people and their warped thinking. Do you believe yourself to be that inferior? That you think you can't do nothing without special treatment? Without special consideration for your skin color? How DEI is not white supremacy? I don't know. If a white supremacist said, oh, uh, black people aren't good leaders. Black people can't, can't rule effectively. Black politicians are, are mismanaging our country. They'll say, oh, that's white supremacy. That's white supremacy talking points, all this stuff. But then if a white liberal said, you can't, you wouldn't have graduated college if it wasn't for affirmative action, if it wasn't for DEI, not white supremacy. Why? Because it's coming out of the mouth of a white liberal. But Democrats, black Democrats have the gall, the audacity to call black conservatives coons when that is coon behavior. You're not standing on principle. At least a conservative will stand on principle. Hey, my race does not define my outcomes. That's what black conservatives believe. I can overcome. I can rise above my circumstances. I can rise above my obstacles. Black conservatives' message is essentially saying, I don't want anyone to do nothing for me. I just want everyone out of my way. That Frederick, that's, that's that Frederick Douglass-ish. Uh, that Frederick Doug, Douglass business. That's what the black conservatives believe in. Black liberals believe in kissing white people's butt for reparations. Reparations is some of the most uh, black inferior talking points I ever heard in my life. Reparations is some of the most coonish-ish I ever heard in my life. You begging white people to give you money for something you never even suffered from. You never been a slave in a day in your life and you asking for money for it. Make it make sense. But this is the, this is the cultural conditioning. The black family survived Jim Crow. Slavery. Discrimination. Segregation. Black codes. The black family survived all that physical discrimination. But all it took was liberal policies to destroy the family. To cause division. To have a black man more likely to kill another black man over any other group. Five times more likely. As a black man, I'm statistically more likely to die at the hands of a black man than a racist white dude. Imagine that. Black people, oh, oh, I want to see you walk down uh, those, those racist white streets. I'll probably come out alive. I'm more likely to come out alive in that environment than if I went to the hood. Where they rob and steal in. Because they want to remind you you're still an N-word. That's how the hood is. That's how depress depressive the hood is. That's why anyone productive, anyone with talent, anyone with abilities, that's why they don't stay in the hood. Look at Cube, Ice Cube. Ice Cube is a perfect example. He tried to stay in his, in his hood and people keep robbing his house, breaking into his house, and then he had to leave. He said, I had to leave my own hood because I had to realize that it's easier to steal from me than for, to help other N-words do it for themselves because it's harder to, to do it for yourself. It's easier to just take from me. And that is the mentality, the crabs in a bucket mentality that the black community has. And this is what DEI has done. Because if a black man like me has confidence in myself, right? I, I, nothing can stop me. Racism can't stop me. Black people are more offended by that than white liberals. Because black people, it, it shows something. It shows, oh, if he's able to prove this, this narrative wrong, then I have to admit that I'm wrong about this stuff. A lot of this race hustling, race baiting stuff is merely to give confirmation bias to people who already think this way. To appease people to feel like, oh, okay, it's not me. It's not my fault. It's other people's fault. It's the system's fault. You're giving them an out to blame something on something else instead of their own actions and decision-making as a group. DEI plays that foil. 
During the segment, Charlemagne showcased a series of advertisements from companies touting their commitment to diversity despite their product having no apparent connection to such issues. The pro this prompted him to question the uh, the, uh, the authentic the the, the, uh, the truthfulness and effectiveness of these corporate DEI efforts. The truth about DEI is that although it's well-intentioned, it's mostly garbage. Well, the road to hell is paved with good intentions, Charlemagne. That's why I don't care about what's the intentions of a policy. That's why I don't care about Trump's intentions. Oh, Trump is intending to be racist here. I don't give a damn. The results is I'm benefiting from the results. Black people benefit from the results. And I'm starting to notice the contrast between a Democrat voter and a conservative voter or someone who's willing to vote Republican is that Democrat voters, liberal voters, progressive voters vote based on the intentions of a politician. That's why they can pretend to be good and nice. Oh, Biden is more uh, or, or more unifying in what way? Because he acts in a way that you like? Make it make sense. Would you rather have someone who's effective but is an asshole? Or someone who's ineffective, but it's not an asshole. This is this is this is like office politics. In uh, in the office, you know the brown nose are the one who kiss up to the boss, and he keeps getting promoted. And you're like, yo, he's not qualified to get promoted. All he does is kiss up to the boss. That's politics. Donald Trump doesn't want to kiss up to the boss, aka the establishment, aka liberals, aka the media, and they demonize him to make you feel the same way about him. But practically. Based on the results, you benefited more under his presidency. But you're going to cut your nose to spite your face because you hate him. You were told to hate him. Public school, overwhelmingly dominated by liberals. You don't think you're getting taught a liberal education? But these pro-blacks, they're fake. These fake pro-blacks, they're quick to say, oh, no, you, you're learning white history. All the institutions, who wrote the books? White people. Who gave you the education? White people. But then when I make the same argument about liberals, who... Who, who manages the administration of public education in for public schools? Liberals? Who runs the Department of Education? Overwhelmingly, they donate to the Democrat Party. Liberals. Okay, aren't you taught history that favors the Democrats? That exclude information that would temper your commitment to the Democratic Party? And could I not make the same argument that you're being propagandized to vote for the Democratic Party? No, 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 Ken, you're talking crazy. You're talking, no, you're not talk, you're talking nonsense. Where there's the biggest incarceration rates is tend to be in democratic cities. This is why they have to take such a hard, soft on crime stance, which hurts black people, by the way, because who rob each other more? Black people. Who kill each other more? Black people. So wouldn't police presence help the law-abiding black people to better be comfortable in this situation? Oh, no, 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 no. No, we don't care. This is how, this is how DEI is white supremacy. It's this idea that black people can't get can go only as far as white people allow them to go. This is why some people will say black power is white guilt. As long as white people feel guilty about black people, black people will have power. But what happens when white people don't feel guilty about being white anymore? What happens to black power? It dies. Because black power never built anything for itself. It's always relying on the white liberal. It relies on the white liberal to give them a job. It relies on the white liberal to create a whole office called DEI office and hire a bunch of black folks in there. I come from corporate America. Their office was full of white people, full of women. The DEI office. The chief DEI officer was a woman. And if it ever was a man, it was a black dude. Is this is this what this is this power? Is this is this what when people talk about oh, we gotta stick together? Stick together in our mental slavery to the Democratic Party. That's how I see it. And I'll end off with this. If a group of people always thought, thinks the same thing about a topic, can you really claim that people are thinking? Or can you claim that the people are stuck in dogma? And I believe the black community is stuck in dogma. I don't care how it makes people feel. No one can sit here and say I'm lying. Right? Because even your, even even someone who's aligned with you, black people, right? Charlemagne, y'all consider Charlemagne more black than me? Even he say, hey, yo, it's mostly garbage. But y'all criticize him too. Because it seems like black people are treating racism like a religion. They need to feel this way. They need to feel oppressed. They need to feel like they're disadvantaged in some way. I don't know. I don't know. But I, I, one thing I know, I, I, I just can't relate. I can't relate to that mindset. I can't subscribe to being a victim. I can't subscribe to being oppressed. Because maybe I was taught better. I don't know. But maybe I come from a different culture. I don't know. Well, I am Haitian. You know, the 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 only black 
slaves to uprise and create a country. So maybe self-determinism is just in my DNA. Maybe that's the case. Maybe that's what it is. Maybe, maybe that's what it is. Honestly, maybe that is what, that's why I think I cater so much to the Republican Party to do for self. Because when the Haitians wanted to be free, they freed themselves. Now they squandered it. I, I, I can admit they made a lot of bad decisions that allowed them to get taken advantage of. But the sentiment is the same. They decided, hey, I'm tired of this ish. We rise up, start a war, beat the French, and then we, <laughs> we, we freed ourselves. I'm taking that same mentality here in political discussions let me know your thoughts in the comment section below i know that was a passionate speech i know i don't really usually get riled up but i felt like i wanted to stick to i wanted to speak on this because i had a lot of people fight me on the dei issue just for their guy to come around and say yeah it's mostly garbage yeah kenny was right crt is garbage dei is garbage affirmative action is garbage but you know i, I get flack for it but you know let me know your thoughts i'd like to hear what you guys have to say with your opinions whether you agree or disagree with me i honor all opinions let me know your th what your thoughts are don't forget to like comment subscribe we appreciate you guys watching the end of the video and i'll catch you guys on the next one peace